Sechi's most significant event occurred while on the ship bound for England. The ship, SS Falaba, was tragically sunk by a German U-boat, resulting in the loss of 104 lives. However, Sechi was fortunate enough to make it onto a lifeboat. On the lifeboat, he was confronted by a European who shouted that he had no right to be alive, while whites were drowning and ordered him to get out of the boat. Fabian Sechi was a Ghanaian nationalist, philosopher, lawyer and writer, born on November 1, 1892 in the Gold Coast, now Ghana. He attended Infantipim School, then known as Wesleyan School in Cape Coast, where his father, John Glaston Saki, was the headmaster. In 1914, Sechi earned a Bachelor of Arts honors in Philosophy from the University of London. He had originally enrolled in English literature at University College London, but was convinced by fellow African student Delo Dosomo, a Nigerian reading for honors in philosophy, to switch to philosophy. Sechi won a prize in his first year of studies in the history of modern philosophy, and in 1913 to 1914, he won prizes in both history of modern philosophy and senior Greek philosophy. After completing his philosophy degree, he returned to the Gold Coast to teach for a period. In 1915, he went back to England to study law and earn a Master of Arts in Philosophy. He then returned to the Gold Coast and became a private practitioner. Sechi's most significant event occurred while on the ship bound for England. The ship, SS Falaba, was tragically sunk by a German U-boat, resulting in the loss of 104 lives. However, Sechi was fortunate enough to make it onto a lifeboat. On a lifeboat, he was confronted by a European who shouted that he had no right to be alive, while whites were drowning and ordered him to get out of the boat. Racism wasn't a new experience for Sechi. During his time as a student in London, he wrote articles about his experiences with white people, titled Our White Friends. Additionally, in his novel, the anglo Fanti short story, Sechi tells the story of an African boy who earned a scholarship to study law in London. In the novel, Sechi writes, It does not take him long to find out that he is regarded as a savage even by the starving unemployable who asks him for arms. Amusing questions are often put to him as to whether he wore clothes before he came to England, whether it was safe for white men to go to his country since the climate was unsuitable to civilized people, whether wild animals wandered at large in the streets of his native town. These unpleasant encounters made him resolve to counter colonial pull-downs and embrace his tradition in a very radical manner. Sechi abjured European clothing and became the first lawyer in the Gold Coast to appear in court wearing African clothing instead of the established Western suit. He continued to wear traditional African clothing until his death. In the book Clothing, A Global History by Robert Ross, the author compares Sechi's bravery to other nationalist figures who employed clothing to challenge the colonial order and assert political identity. Sechi also wrote a comedy called The Blinkers, which highlighted the negative effects of discarding African culture and embracing foreign culture perpetuated by colonial rule. In 1918, he was called to the bar from the Inner Temple and was later elected the president of the Aborigines' Right Protection Society. The Aborigines' Right Protection Society was an association formed in 1897. They protested and secured victory over the horrible land bill of 1897 that sought to give the Queen of England all the unoccupied lands in the Gold Coast and the other British colonies in West Africa. He was a member of the National Congress of British West Africa and was also appointed as a member of the Kuse Committee for Constitutional Change. It was their recommendations that formed the basis of the 1951 constitution which marked a giant step toward independence. He passed away in June 1956. Kwabena Sechi emphasized on the detrimental effects that may impede Africa's progress if the continent did not return to its pre route and carefully choose the aspects of alien ways that are beneficial to the children of Africa. The concerns raised by Sechi in the 1920s remain relevant today. Recently, Kenya implemented a ban on the wearing of traditional African attire in parliament. Even the president's favorite Kaunda suit, named after the late Zambian president Kenneth Kaunda, is prohibited within the parliamentary premises. 
Speaker Moses Witangula outlined a mandated dress code for men, including a coat, color, tie, long sleeve shirt, long trousers, socks, shoes, or service uniform. Women are expected to adhere to guidelines specifying business, formal, or smart casual wear with skirts and dresses below knee length. Is Africa still struggling to overcome the feelings of inferiority and low self-esteem? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, click on the subscribe button, like, and share. Thank you.